In our last video, we explained how copyright protects your creative things. It gives you rights over them, which you can enforce in court. But when can you enforce those rights? That's an extraordinarily complicated subject, but we'll take a crack at making it simple in this video. Now, throughout this series, we've skipped over a lot of the legal technicalities, but unfortunately, we need to deal with one of them here. So do pause and rewind this part of the video if you need to. So, we recall from the previous video that a right is something you can use in court to get other people to do things for you. For example, if someone steals your phone, you can ask the court to make the thief return your phone to you by saying you have a right over your phone. More specifically, you have a right to prevent others from taking your phone. And when someone takes your phone, they go against this right you have to prevent them from taking your phone. In legal terms, we say that they have infringed your right to prevent others from taking your phone. So infringement is simply going against someone's rights. That was probably a lot to take in, but there's more. It gets a bit more complicated in the world of copyright. So once again, please bear with me. But what really is copyright? Let's answer that question. Well, its name gives it away. Copyright is a right to copy. This is an elegant concept, and here's why. Now, we know from our earlier discussion that you have a right to prevent others from taking your things. When we're talking about real things like your phone, there's really only one way to steal. You literally take the thing. You physically hold it in your hand. But we know from the second video of this series that copyright subsists in creative things, intangible things, which you can't steal by literally taking. But surely you can copy those intangible things, you can copy a song, you can copy a piece of digital art, even a chapter of fan fiction. And that's what copyright really wants to protect you from. It wants to give you the right to prevent others from copying your creative things. And it follows that when someone goes against this right by copying your creative thing, they have infringed your copyright. If you've been following up to this point, that's amazing. There's just one more thing to flag before we're done. Throughout this series, we've done some illustrations using the example of stealing. The word stealing suggests some form of bad intention. To some, the idea of accidentally stealing something sounds silly. But as you might have guessed, rights over personal property, real things and copyrights included, don't care about your intentions. The position is clear. Once you own something, you have a right to prevent others from taking it, whether accidentally or intentionally. Now, of course, it is quite hard to accidentally take a real thing from someone. But it's not as hard to accidentally copy someone else's copyright. For example, when you just love a song so much that you sing it in the shower, you're copying it. Or this happens quite a bit in real life. If you write a song that sounds similar to someone else's, you could be accused of copying them. Of course, copyright has ways of dealing with these weird situations, and these are mostly in line with our common sense, but that's a super technical rabbit hole which we won't be going down today. All we need to know is that even if you accidentally copy someone's creative thing, you have still infringed their copyright. So that's all I have to say for this video. I hope it was useful, and I'll see you in the next one.